Knowing how the supply system works in Hearts of Iron 4 makes the difference between winning and losing your wars. So today we're going to show you exactly how you should manage your supply system as well as share some tips and tricks that I'm sure a lot of you are not aware of. If we get 4k likes on this video I'm going to do a tank design guide and consider subscribing. I'm trying to get to 100k subs and once we do I'll make a paradox mega campaign. You can access the supply map mode by either clicking on this button over here or by clicking on your keyboard on the F4 key which opens up this amazing map. You can probably deduct from the fact that there's red, blue, purple tiles. The blue ones and the lighter color ones are obviously the ones that are getting the supply that you need. The purple ones it's where it's starting to get bad. The red ones is where it's extremely bad supply wise and the yellow ones basically somewhere in the middle. Of course we have the supply hubs and the railway systems. The capital hub which is basically where all of your supplies or originate from transfers supplies via the railway system to the various supply hubs around the map. The amount of supply that your supply hubs get depends on the railway level. For level 1 railways you can only get 15 supplies to the supply hub. So for example here we got a level 2 railway but because along the way towards the connection with the capital there's a level 1 railway it limits all the other supply getting to the Siberian parts to level 1 supplies. So in order to upgrade this to a level 2 supply, we can click on the supply hub and then we can click the upgrade railway, which obviously will only upgrade the railway that we need to upgrade being the one over here. Each tile is going to get upgraded and it costs 170 with an extra 130 per existing railway level per tile. So remember that. That means for the whole thing here, we're actually paying 3000 IC. Another option you have once you click on the supply hub is to basically deny supply to your allies in this region as well as you can choose the motorization level for this particular region. By default this starts out as a horse motorization level and you can upgrade it to a motorized one and motorized two. What this does basically is it increases the range which is highlighted right now. You can press shift and see the highlighted range of the supply hub. So that means all the tiles outside of this range are not getting any supplies from this particular supply hub. Obviously going for the horses means that we're not actually getting as many of the tiles covered as we would once we upgrade to the motorized. Once you go motorized 1, you actually use up 25 trucks and once you go motorized 2, you use up 50 trucks. So make sure you do have enough trucks available before you upgrade your motorization level. Otherwise you would just lose out on logistics and not get through any supply anyway. Do take note, upgrading this to a level 2 motorization level does not increase the overall supply in this region it's still gonna be 15 until you upgrade the railway system getting to this particular supply hub each railway level upgrades the amount of supply you get in your hub by five one more important thing to note is the fact that supply hubs that are by rivers such as the one in Stalingrad aside from the railway system it also can get its supply via rivers connected to the capital or to other supply hubs. Do take note that rivers act as level 1 railways and cannot be upgraded so the maximum supply you would get via rivers is 15. A good example of this is the Arkhangelsk supply hub which doesn't have any railway but is still getting 15 supply via this river over here getting connected to the Vologda supply hub. So when planning your supply hubs take rivers into account and do remember that you need to control both sides of the river in order to get the supply through. If the enemies manage to get one side of the river then supply completely stops going alongside that river. Whenever your troops are under supplied you're gonna see an icon right next to them. For example this one here has the red icon which means that they're only getting 25% or below of their supply needed so they're gonna take massive amounts of attrition. I'll make a separate theater with only the units here and I'm just gonna show you how much attrition we're getting. As you can see it starts to ramp up every couple of days we do start losing a few infantry equipment artillery tanks and whatever and this basically kills your entire production within just a year you can actually lose tens of thousands of supply if you're not taking care of your supplies so it is vital that whenever you see this icon over here you move the unit away from there you can always press f4 and see how much supply that unit is getting and if it's not getting the right amount you just move it out until you can upgrade the rail 
railway system and as a consequence get more supply in your supply hub if you have an orange icon for the supply next to your divisions that means that unit is getting between 25 to 50 percent of its required supply which is the case with this unit here that is getting 30 percent and if they have a yellow supply icon that means they're getting between 50 to 75 percent of the supply needed so these guys are getting 74 percent which means they're one percent below the amount that they're supposed to be getting if you pile up all of your units in one tile you're gonna get massive amounts of attrition so look at the same theater that we have the first one here but with all the units stacked up in one province the amount of attrition we're getting is absolutely insane so this is not gonna be the case in the early game but once you go to war I've seen many people making this mistake and once your units are under supplied it's really easy to lose battles get encircled and get completely wiped out even though you have superior numbers take note that you also need supplies for your airplanes and your ships albeit not as much as you need for the divisions you still need to make sure that you have enough supply and that you don't overstack all three of these combat units in the same tile that is not getting supplied you can also choose the motorization priority for your divisions as well as you can assign railway guns once you have them available from the next screen another cool feature is the fact that you can now scorch earth use 5 pp and this basically destroys your railway systems here and they cannot be repaired until the enemy takes full control of this province and lets it be repaired once more so used wisely this can completely crush the germans whenever you're playing as the soviets because they literally have to go through zero supply tiles before they reach the supply hub or the main city in that region so that they can start reactivating and letting railways be repaired infrastructure has also been capped at level 5 so that means you get 10 percent more resources for each upgraded level of infrastructure as well as you get 20 percent faster boost to constructing factories for each level of infrastructure but aside from all that infrastructure plays a role in supplying your regions as you can see in this province we're getting 1.2 supply from infrastructure 0.43 from population and 1.15 from victory points which also translates into cities which means if we were to be completely disconnected from the capital we would still have 2.8 supply in Hanover but of course we really need the 15 supply here that comes in from Berlin we can easily upgrade this to 20 supply by upgrading the railway system which is literally just a railway between Magdeburg and Hanover once you do that make sure you prioritize it and one very important aspect to keep in mind about choosing your motorization level is the fact that whenever you have a huge amount of supply hubs in a very small area and there's few countries that have this notably the Germans the French Italians and pretty much Western European countries you don't necessarily need to upgrade this to level 2 motorization from the start as level 1 motorization pretty much delivers the same amount of supply range wise however later on once you get bigger divisions and more divisions you want to have this at level 2 but personally I think that for Germans you can keep it even on horses for the beginning of the game since you do get the other regions covered by adjacent supply hubs this is in contrast to the Soviets who desperately do need the extra motorization level Level because well frankly they don't have that many supply hubs especially in the Siberian areas they have a lot of supply hubs in the main Russian and Ukrainian parts but the further you go east the less and less supply hubs that you actually encounter in fact there's literally just one line going all across the Soviet Union to Vladivostok you start off with the regular 70 IC cost trains but remember that you can always upgrade to the next interwar train the only difference being the fact that it is 20 production cost cheaper so the sooner you research this the more trains you can pump out alternatively you can also make the armored trains which have 250 armor and these guys are basically three or four times harder to kill by enemy planes than the regular trains are it's your choice I personally prefer to have a lot of the cheap ones but the armored ones are good as well later on once you upgrade and you get the railway gun it has a massive production cost but they do offer some significant bonuses the reality is it's quite cheap 
considering that you need one railway gun per army to get the bonuses. Take note, however, that the railway guns actually use the railway system, so if the railway system is damaged, you cannot move your railway guns on that particular railway system. Building supply hubs is extremely expensive. They cost 20,000 production, so make sure you really need to have that supply hub built. One alternative to supply hubs is ports. That is correct. You can build a naval base, which costs only 3,000 production cost and it basically behaves the same like a supply hub but of course you can only build it by the coastline and it has to have a railway connection so for example i'm going to build this here instantly and i'm going to get a connection from this supply hub to it and there you go it is now a level one supply hub the amount of supply that you get in your naval bases is upgraded basically the same like regular supply hubs when you just upgrade the railways connecting to them if you're an island nation for example your supplies have to go via convoys so for that you need to have a lot of extra convoys to deliver the required supplies to your naval based slash supply hubs around the world in this situation obviously it's not connected by railway so the way that you upgrade this is basically by clicking on the upgrade railway icon and eventually this will become a level 3 level 4 and so on the railway between your capital and the main harbor from which the supplies are heading out has to be max level that means level 5 in order to upgrade the downstream harbors or naval bases to higher levels and guys here's the best way to deal with supply in your games this is going to basically revolutionize everything you know about supplies in hoi 4 as you can see as an example here we're getting 34 percent of our supply and when you go to the supply map mode it looks pretty daunting in this area doesn't it but here's what we're going to do we're going to set up some of our transport planes in this region and we set them to to air supply this region and now look at how fast this goes from 34 supply to a hundred percent supply booyah shaka we got no supply issues anymore in this entire region look at how beautiful and blue this is essentially if you do have green air and you do need at least yellow or green air around that region you can also assign transport planes and those transport planes are going to give you the required supply via air to do your attacks it's a really cheap and easy way to bypass the whole railway system of course you still want to have railways and stuff but planes are cheap and you can just mass produce them to not worry about supply ever again the added bonus of this is the fact that the enemy still doesn't have supplies but you do another thing i highly recommend you do is snipe over the supply hubs from the enemy so if we get the novi sad supply hub they're gonna have zero supply in this area and it's basically gonna make it impossible for them to actually defend similar Similarly, you can also snipe the railway systems when you are attacking and if they didn't scorch earth and the AI almost never does unless it's the Soviet Union then you get full control of that region do remember that you also need to upgrade those areas to get more supply in for the armies and remember that you will lose a lot of trucks and trains so make sure that you are producing both trains and trucks throughout the game once you've researched landing craft 2 you can also build a floating harbor which essentially gives you an extra bit of supply whenever you're doing your naval invasions but it does run out so you need to actually capture a proper port in that time another really vital tip to know is the fact that if you actually surround a country's capital and all of their railway systems cannot deliver supply the country basically starves out of supply and you can easily kill them off so the best tactic for example for the germans is to go rush for moscow surround moscow and make sure none of these railways are at actually operational thus the rest of the country is just gonna die out of attrition by itself if you enjoyed the video consider leaving a like once we get 4,000 likes i'm gonna do the tank designer guide and consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this in the future so i'll see you in the next one and i want to give a very big thank you to all of my channel members patreon members as well as my twitch supporters i really wouldn't be able to do this without all of your support you guys are absolutely amazing